Hello guys and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. This is Alex and today I would like to talk about the new release of Sub Substance Painter. Uh, we'll be going through things such as the painting experience has been improved um, because of adding uh, Photoshop brushes to our uh, uh, kit. Uh, they've also increased the um, uh, well the options for sensitivities on pen pressure, opacity, new, a new opacity blending mode. Um, some uh, new features like for example automatic UVs uh, which we'll go through a bit in uh, a bit more in depth in this video uh, also the new roller uh, paint roller stroke which basically allows the brushes to follow a path uh, and some new dynamic uh, some new some new filters that they've added as well so stay tuned and and they will basically we'll, we'll go through each of them uh, step by step um, I hope you guys enjoy and uh, yeah I'll see you in just a second so the first thing we're going to be talking about is the automatic UVs that have now been added to Painter. Basically what this means is, uh, if you've uh, made your mesh, let's say in ZBrush, you've sculpted something truly awesome, you've now reduced the topology, you know, the, the polygon count to, a, let's say, to a decent level, and you just want to start uh, painting it straight away, then you can just import that mesh into a new project in Substance Painter and basically it will automatically generate uh, UVs for you. Uh, I've just imported a, uh, a well a lamp, basically, and these are the UVs that it has generated. On the texture set list, I've only got one, one just one texture set, uh, which then means that this um, uh, the entirety of the textures I'm going to apply to this object is going to be on just one uh, UV. Now, th there are some things to to take you know to take uh, into consideration about this automatic process. In no way can it replace uh, proper um, UV layouts. Um, you may think this is an amazing feature, which and it, and it actually is for constanting, especially is going to work wonders for people who struggle with UVs in general. But this is still something you will have to learn, and unless they come up with some really amazing updates to this current test version of this. And what I mean, what, what I'm trying to say here is. For example, in this lamp, I'm just going to activate uh, a wireframe. Um, so basically, I've got these um, areas, which would then be the glass, and then I've got these areas, which would be like the metal frame, right? Now, Painter doesn't know what I want to do, obviously. So it, it just took the entire geometry and then laid it out into the on, on a UV island. So there's no um, texture optimization to speak of. You're not going to suddenly add a lot of details on your mesh uh, because Painter knew that you wanted the metal to be a lot higher quality than the glass. It will try and work out the proportions. Don't get me wrong. And and uh, let's just let's just deactivate the wireframe. We can add. Uh, so we've got a layer. We can then add a generator. And in generator, we'll just type in UV, which is a new um, generator added. And this is going to give us a checker, a, a checker box, basically, just to see um, how the UV, you know, see the seams. And you can, you can see them there. Basically, you can see how the, the UVs have been laid out. Um, I think it's doing a pretty decent, you know, a pretty decent job. But things such as uh, taking your UVs from uh, space zero to one to say, you know, I want all my glass, um, my glass elements into this and on this model to be overlapping, um, so so I can reduce the amount of texture space. So I can I just add more details to my to my mesh. Well, it cannot currently do that. So I've just put a, put a photo on the screen now to see what I'm talking about. Basically, uh, I'm just adding some more examples of how you know how a user would go about doing his UVs. It, it's all about how well you can optimize this to get the best perform, you know, best quality of your textures. But it's really dependent on what style you're looking for. Is it realism or is it more stylized? Stylized in general doesn't require that much. Uh, you know, the, the texture, the texture quality can be mitigated by just having it more stylized. Um, so as I said, at the minute there's no overlapping possible. Uh, I'm just going through examples on the screen on some more, you know, things that you can, you can, um, uh, some other effects. Right, so let's just uh, try to do a more complicated mesh as this is quite, um, you know, straightforward. So I'm just going to close this, well, actually, yeah, I'm going to close this document and just go for a new one. 
Uh, by the way, you can bake the textures as well, but um, you know that's a, another that's another uh, caveat of it. So I've just imported now uh, something more complicated. I've just got this tower that I repeatedly use in my videos. But anyway, so um, this takes a bit longer because it's got all these texture sets to go into as well, and it's just it's a higher poly polygon count on it as well. So so right now they have said that the automatic UVs will take um, a bit longer to, to process on high polygon meshes, but they are looking at improving that over time. And this is by no way, uh, this is by no means a high polygon uh, mesh, um, you know, very high polygon. It's just, it's just uh, well, I would say normal. Right, so as you can see here, I've got all these texture sets. Now, what this is going to do to help with the process of automatic UVs is if you create texture sets, which basically means in your other software of, ch of choice, like 3ds Max or Blender or something like that, you add materials to certain parts of, a, of your mesh that you want to, be, to then be in one texture set. And that is going to help Substance Painter work out uh, how many UV, separate UVs you want to have, thus giving you more quality on them. Uh, it, it's doing some very odd things, I must say. The, the way the way it's the way it, it uh, optimizes the UV. So if we add a checker box on this first, um, uh, sorry, on, on this first um, mesh, um, as you can see, how the seams have been created. Uh, I've just added a photo now on the screen to show you how the current layout is for this uh, for this uh, structure uh, made by hand, basically. Um, so, so that that's just an example. Again, we can. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll delete this and I'll bake the texture. I'll, do, I'll bake the normal map so you can have a look as how that looks on, on top of this. Um, but I will skip the baking as well. Will take a bit of, a bit of time. But I'm going to bake the whole the whole mesh, and I'm probably going to do AO as well. So the baking process has finished. Uh, it's quite decent actually. Uh, but as you can see, there are some artifacts around the um, edges of this uh, of this mesh, and that's because the option when you bake a when you bake a mesh map, um, where it says match and match by mesh name, if I activate that, there will be glitches. Um, th there will be some glitches because they have um, bugged it in the last release, and they're now working on a hot fix to basically get this resolved. Uh, if I would have uh, activated that option, we wouldn't have these artifacts anywhere. Um, so again, you can see how the resolution of the of the mesh has not been, um, you know, optimized because the automatic UV um, UV layout that the substance painter is creating is not really looking at separating and uh, separating the mesh into multiple UV islands. Now I am running, I do have quite a few texture sets um, in here, which then basically means that I'm going to get, you know, uh, a more resolution on every part of the of the entire mesh, uh, but it's in no way, um, as I said, optimized. Now, uh, some other things to take into into account, uh, I've just I've just put, uh, put on the screen some known issues that they've, they've got in this new release. So you guys can have a look on that. You can go on their website and look for, into the magazine and, and find some more information. Uh, other things to take note of is that the they really need to improve how the UVs are being generated. Rather than happening when you import the mesh, I think it would be a better idea to, to, to be able to do that. Um, after So you import the mesh, you can work on it. You can then tell the system to generate a UV. You can tell the, the painter to generate a new UV based on a few options that you select. Like for example, what part of the mesh do you want it? To, you know, you want you want it to be a very low uh, uh, resolution because it's something that maybe you can't even see. So there's no point in actually uh, having having that occupying your texture space. Um, it would also um, be helpful if you can import a mesh that already has a new V and you can select at the beginning to basically not read its UV and, and instead you will generate a new one in Painter. But enough, uh, enough about the UVs, the, the next feature is the brushes, uh, paint, uh, Photoshop brushes. You can now import Photoshop brushes. I've actually got a few in here, uh, mainly the Kyle brushes that come now with uh, Painter. They do have the name Kyle in front of them, which is making it a bit difficult to actually uh, see what they uh, what these um, brushes do. So you kind of have to hover hover over them and read the text. 
So for example, this is a dragon scale brush. Um, just gonna make that a bit smaller. Um, I've got the color red set up. So if we start painting in here, you can see how, you know, you can, you can see basically how, how this, um, how I'm using this uh, brush uh, from uh, a Photoshop brush. I can use this as well. You know, this is a, uh, what, what is that? Con, con, see, you can't, you can't really tell what, what, the, what the brushes are because you have to hover over them. So it says here, yeah, it's a Cubist 2. Uh, one other thing that they've added is the um, blending. They've added a new blending mode. So for example, based on based on how, how hard you press on the on the pen. So you've got the, uh, down here, you've got this advanced blending and you move, you put this on lighten. And then let's just select a different brush actually. Something that's more uh, flat. So we'll take this graffiti, for example. So now I'm just I'm just pressing. Well, I see the I see the graffiti has changed back to normal, which means it has no blending, unless I change the blending settings. So I'll put that to lighten. So that was with full blending. Now this is um, a bit lighter. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but now I'm pressing very hard, and I, uh, actually it doesn't it doesn't seem to be conveying the effect that much. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. Control all that, and let me just um, let me just select a hard brush. So, for example, this charcoal. Yeah, we'll we'll put the stamps blending again to lighten. Um, let's start again. Oh, this is this is actually quite heavy on performance. Yeah, this is very heavy on performance. Um, I think this is a new brush that they've made, which again they were they were talking about in the release. I'm trying to find, okay, so I've taken a basic hard now. This should be able to, with this we should be able to show you the opacity. So I'm just lightly pressing this. It doesn't seem to be working. Hmm, this is very interesting actually. I don't quite understand why it's not doing it because putting that to lighten will then mean that it should be doing it. So I don't really understand where the problem is coming from. Um, unless it's an issue with the pen, with the with the actual tablet. Because I, I can see the sensitivity working. As I press harder, you can see how the brush grows bigger. As I, pro, I press lighter, you can see how um, it's smaller. So yeah, it's a very interesting, um, interesting uh, thing that I, I'm seeing here. Um, I did see blending working earlier. It just doesn't seem to be working right now, which is very, very sad because I cannot showcase this. Um, right. Another thing that they've introduced is these new filters, uh, like for example, the comic book filter. So if we add on this layer, if we add a, um, a filter and then we type in here comic, that should give us the comic book filter. Yeah, that's the one. And this is, this is basically in its, well, this this is we have no color intensity, so I'm going to increase that, and you can see how the effects just look like in a comic book. So you can play around with all these settings and just get you know the best possible result you want. Ad adding an ambient occlusion and a curvature map to this is going to help um, uh, more with the with the effects that you're getting. Um, some uh, another thing to there's another filter in here, um, which was water. Um, yeah, this one, uh, watercolor, which again, right now it doesn't doesn't uh, quite do anything spectacular because the the what what we've used wasn't wasn't the greatest uh, color color variation. I've now loaded the oil uh, paint filter, which is going to take a while to to do its magic, but uh, it it just transforms your textures into an oily painting, and you know gives them an oily painting effect. Again, you have all these settings in here that you can play with. So uh, another feature of the brushes, uh, how to use brushes, for example, I've loaded these chains in, in, my, uh, in my texture, in my, sorry, um, my brush settings. So now what I want to do is I've added these chains and I want to paint on top of them. So let me just, that's, that's our original layer. So now with the chains activated and with the option to follow path on, you can see that when I paint, oh, sorry, I didn't load the chains. Right, so now when I paint, you can see how the chain follows my brush around. Yeah. If I deselect the follow path, then there will always be, you know, I have to, I have to change the angle of the chain. 
but we follow paths they will just follow the path that you, you're taking your pen on or mouse or whatever you have uh, and that's going to give a very nice natural effect to it um i think these are the, the main points to cover in this uh, release uh, they're working on um, p uh, painting over uh, multiple UVs which they have been working on for years but I think this time around they might be serious on releasing it they have uh, released a, a, beta ver a beta version for 500 people the first 500 to subscribe to it uh, I subscribed to it but unfortunately I didn't get it yet uh, we'll definitely cover that when it comes out uh, anyway if you guys have any questions just uh, go go in the comment sections below ask whatever questions you've got if I if I have the answers I will I will uh, uh, let you guys know i hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe if you did i'm going to release some um, quick tips videos for zbrush 3ds max substance painter and alchemist in the near future so stay tuned for that um, if there's anything in here that you think i should have covered and i haven't please let me know and i will make sure in the next video i i do just that so thank you guys for watching and uh, have a good day